This is the journal of Dr. Hans Fliescher, formerly of Bremen. I find myself on an ill-suited winter night in the village of Potsdam, somewhere in Prussia, I'm not sure where. I have been working as a barber surgeon for these people and enjoying a comfortable stay in the Three Feathers, uh, a nice inn um, well beyond the means of this small town. And when the Three Feathers cannot accommodate me, then uh, Frau Katrina's... Uh, let's just say that she deals with companionship. My past is troubled. I will not bore you with the details, but suffice it to say a disagreement in Bremen meant that I was expelled from the university before I could complete my medical reading. As such, although I call myself doctor, it is a fancy that I've taken upon myself, and I'm no better than, well, the piss prophets and leech crafters that you see around these days. Which is just as well, if I was a proper doctor, well, there's a war on. The Protestants and the Catholics and the Habsburgs and the who knows who else, battling across the Holy Roman Empire and beyond. Were I a true doctor, I'd be in the fields, pulling shot from the legs of screaming soldiers. No, I'm quite comfortable where I am, thank you very much. There is another thing, of course. In my learnings, I found in my possession an unusual book. I acquired it, such as the you do, through a excavation, you see. Myself and some fellows from the university were looking for some cadavers to um, learn our skills. And within some strange tomb, some ancient sepulchre hidden deep beneath the earth, I found not a fresh corpse, as you can imagine, but a rather strange and ornate burial chamber. And on a plinth, a lectern almost, a strange book, I swear, I swear it whispered to me, and I could not help myself, I took it up, and, secreting it about myself, when I should have been studying medicine, I spent my time learning from this book. It turns out it was a tome of, shall we say, hermetic wisdom, uh, alchemy, necromancy, uh, what the folklorists will uh, call magic, although I took a more scientific approach to these things. You didn't learn things from this book. It forced itself into my mind. I found myself hearing things, things that at first I thought weren't there, but then I realised are everywhere. Whispers, the whispers of the dead. Every, every corpse, every lich yard, every dead or dying person had something to say and I could hear it. Whispers, indistinct, but it was there. If there was just some way, I thought, if I could make those whispers into a shout so I could better understand them, make them go away. And so I did what any man would do. Drink. Wine. Ale when I could find it. But laudanum, if I could afford it. To dull the senses, to take the edge off. So there I am in Potsdam when I happen across two gentlemen. One, a stranger, a man at arms, a mercenary, I do not know. The other familiar to me, but not as familiar as I would like. One was Jürgen, a devout man, but not to any sensible god whom the Catholics and Protestants war over, no. He followed some deity he referred to as Zod, and he was quite focused, quite zealous in his devotion. He would frequently mutter prayers and kiss some talisman or fetish he had round his neck. The other was Heinrich, a baker of some sort. Heinrich was a more simple soul and easily 
befuddled by the complexities of a more urbane existence. But this Jürgen had come to me because he had heard of my talents, such as they are, and wished me to commune with his dead friend at the lo location of some idol of some sort. This was the opportunity I'd been waiting for, a chance to prove my skill, but at the same time, events had drawn me away and made me curious as to a curious matter involving grave robbers. They believe that they were attacked by wolves, although further questioning and one corpse later revealed that where they claimed a headless corpse set about them. So we made a compact, those two other gentlemen and myself. I wished to look into this matter and with their assistance see what we could uncover. And in exchange I would see what I could learn about Jürgen's dead companion. Well there was a series of confusing events, one very curious constable and uh, a harrowing matter involving communicating with the dead. And now we find ourselves on the run. I know we cannot stay in Potsdam, but I've seen things, heard things. They have too. This creature, this headless creature, would steal the heads of others and place them upon its own, but they would still rot. And when I talked to the dead, the things they told me of the hereafter, the nothingness, the void beyond. But no, I've learned too much now and I, I must continue my lessons. And by following these two individuals and this zealot's mad quest, but I do not know. Is he still faithful after what he's seen? Well, it doesn't matter. The town will be against us soon. And they will be a superstitious lot with their fires and pitchforks. The safest thing for us to do would be to flee and see what other occult mysteries this world has in store for us. May God have mercy on our souls.